Yeah, from sin, you're in the dark house. The sin says when they start saying that, then there's something wrong. Right, right. If they drop a shawty, if they, if they drop a shawty, or if they drop a, you know, we're in the doghouse, or if, if Jamel one day just happens to start barking, hey, 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 then we got a problem. Then we got a problem. Then we got a real problem. <laughs> okay? From Loose Next Side, remember the bootleg cologne and perfume that had inspired by on the label? Right. Uh, from the 47 problem, Jordan Peele was also influenced by Mad TV, Carol Burnett, and In Living Color. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, Dave Chappelle, you got to see this thing now. It was a good, and I don't think I've talked about this on the show either. Um, so Chappelle's got two uh, stand-up comedy performances on Netflix. And me and the wife, as a matter of fact, we still have to watch the second one. But we watched the first one. Very good. Very good Dave Chappelle. Classic Chappelle. And he just, he he makes a point of it in this thing, man, to talk about how, you know, he don't feel like, he doesn't feel like he and uh, Peel, um, you know, give him enough respect in taking his shit. And I, I just don't, I don't, I don't agree with him on that. I'm a big fan of Chappelle. Big fan. Probably my favorite comedian going today but you know I, I got an opinion of my own and i don't think so man i mean you're a comedian you're doing a sketch comedy you ain't the first one to do it if anybody got a darn beef then you can say flip wilson <laughs> flip wilson was doing his sketch comedy back in the late 60s which is pretty damn good for that time you can go on youtube and see it so did richard Pryor steal flip wilson shit did, did, did Keenan Ivy Wayne steal Richard Pryor and Flip Wilson shit? What? No. Uh-uh. I, don't, I don't like that. I don't buy into that. For Montana Jones, Key and Peele were chosen. Don't get it twisted because of that Get Out movie. Huh. From Mr. Harper, the OG quote of the week is definitely worth your time. From Donovan Freeman, the second Chappelle show on Netflix was even funnier. Okay, so I got to see that. I just hadn't gotten around to it. Too much damn TV to watch these days. Streaming TV. I can't get caught up. I can't get caught up, man. I'll start watching the show, and then I'll start watching another show, and before I know it, three, four months pass by. That would happen. That's what happened to me on uh, Daredevil. Like, I haven't even gotten around to a Daredevil and The Flash. I started watching those two series, man, and I just hadn't gotten back to it. It's just too much TV. Uh, Sidney Jackson, white folks swear up and down that ESPN is liberal and anti-white because they got rid of Sage. These Trump lovers are delusional as F. Uh, they ignore the 80% negative stories ESPN runs about ninjas, fools. Um, I hear you, bro. From Clay, Mr. Cole, 45, Davis, everybody singing this mask off a track by Future. The hook is fire, but we shouldn't be praising uh, doing Molly. Yeah, man. I think maybe that's the song that I'm talking about that I just heard where it occurred to me that 9 out of 10, and I guess maybe it's not just Future's trap music, period. Like, there's a certain trap music beat. Let me see if I can find one right now. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Um, I'm going to this thing. No. Uh, I can't even think of it right now. But there's a certain beat, man, that's just dominating. Maybe it's because we're in Atlanta and Future's big in Atlanta and that's all they do around here. Maybe it's not that way in New York or in Texas or California. But these trap music beats, man, they are the exact same beat. (laughs) They are. I ain't mad for these young boys making their money, man. But, I mean, have some creativity, man. And and you know what? It's it's, it's, it's also a a facet of, of music and how FM radio stations work. Like, they go with what's what's proven. They only play five, six songs an entire day. And they just go with what's working. They don't care about creativity. They don't care that we play in the same damn beat every 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's very disheartening. From uh, Clay, Mr. Colt, 45, Davis, everybody's singing The Mask. Oh, I just read that. I apologize. Donovan Freeman, the second Chappelle 
on Netflix was even funnier from Sluggo X Squad Sydney. Yeah, I don't even F with liberal anything these. Take a look at that liberal of San Francisco is treating ninjas. Um, 3% of population, 50 plus percent imprisoned. Yeah, you need to see the uh, the documentary 13th. <laughs> a real eye opener, man. From KC, Fiddler and Kunda had a nice comedy skit show that Massa stole. All right. From uh, Clay, Mr. Colt, 45 Davis. If I hear Michael Smith say, the kitchen in the bedroom, Florida, we ride. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know they straight stealing. They, you, you know they straight jacking if they take Derek's quote from the chat room. Right, right. For Mr. Harper. So I think Dave looks at it like, do you know how hard it was for me to get that bit through? And now they let Key and Peel run with my ish and getting all my views. I see no check and can't even get my name in the credits. Mm. Yeah, man. I um I guess in relative comparison to Chappelle and this uh uh Key and Peel thing. Um, yeah, I do see a lot of things we've talked about. I do see a lot of things where we really didn't have opposition. I will say this. The program director when we first started, Matt Edgar, like he got it. He got it from day one. And like I don't ever remember ever, ever for like the first nine, ten years of us on radio where they said, you guys shouldn't say this, you shouldn't do that. Um, at the very end, that's what we heard every single day. You know, uh, why y'all playing this music? Who is Chuck D? Who is public enemy? <laughs> why do you bark? Why do you did this, did this, that, and the other? But that was politics. They were trying to get rid of us and cut our salary. So that's a different story. So in relative terms to what my man Mr. Harper is saying, who every once in a while has a show on SME as well, can't wait to have him back, um, and saying Dave Chappelle probably had to fight tooth and nail to get his skits on because they were so um, – demonstrative I guess in the time that he came along a lot of things that he did was very controversial you know the character the white character that uh that was uh the black character that was in the KKK that dude I mean he did a lot of stuff that you know 20 years ago they never would have let fly and so when he sees Key and Peele doing it no problem yeah he might feel some type of way but I can't even I can't even side with him on that because I don't know that experience when we started, them cats let us do everything. They got it. And when they started seeing money coming in from advertisers, they got it even more. <laughs> right. They really were all in. Yeah. You and Ryan, go ahead and do whatever the fuck y'all want to do. It's all good. Right, right. So we had we we didn't have that experience. I mean, they let us do what we wanted to do. I mean, we were always professional. We had a good time. We barked and we, you know, wrestled in the studio and all of that. But we were professionals, all right, and still a professional till this day, uh, even though it's just one of us. Okay, so we handled our business. We took a business approach to everything that we did. There was a method to the madness. Yeah, if you just turn on the radio to the stews back in 2003, you heard these ninjas barking and screaming and shawty and this, that, and the other. But we were just talking like we normally talk when we were at my brother's house in the basement. And the station got that. They understood that it was just dudes, you know, having guy talk. Now, normally on AM radio and on sports radio, the guy talk you heard sound like some suburban dude from Alpharetta, <laughs> you know, or something like that. So it was... It, kind of a shock to a lot of people when they heard two black dudes on the radio talking about sports the way that we did. That was nothing new to us. You know, we just went with it. And they understood it, man. So it's, it's, it's just crazy, man. It's just it's just crazy, man. And it, it, it really does seem like and I never talk about this. Y'all know this. I, I rarely bring up this conversation, man. I probably bring up this conversation on why I'm not on radio, why me and my brother not never got another job. I, I never bring this stuff up. I moved on, man. I mean, I'm not looking back. 
You know, but every once in a while when it comes up, I'll talk about it. I'm not saying I won't talk about it. And so I, I talk about this and the stews and what happened and this, that, and the other every, I don't know, eight months. If y'all listen to the show, six, seven, eight months. But when I think about it, man, just like I told Jeff, it's almost like these cats came together <laughs> and said, we can't let these dudes get back on top. We can't let that type of radio get back on. Well, but one of the guys in the conversation, but but they had like the most dominating ratings in sports talk radio history. Yeah, but still, I mean, because they were so good and uh, if they have a spot, then my cousin and my frat brother that I went to college with can't get that spot. <laughs> right. Right. That's what it seems like. We used to get, and, and I can't even get into the describing how numbers work, but we literally, and, and, the, and the competitors who are still on radio right now, we literally, okay, doubled the numbers from our competitor at the same time slot as us for over 10 years. For over 10 years. And they're still on radio right now. They're still on radio. They'd have like a, a, a three a three share, we'd have like a six or seven share, which which you, I'm, I'm talking about small numbers and you won't understand it, but a six or seven share in Sports Talk Radio in 2005 was literally like, I don't know, 50 million listeners. Maybe not that much, but a lot. And the cats that we dominated are still on radio right now, have never left radio, probably have been on radio now. If I've been out, uh, so it's like 15, 16 years. They've probably been on like 17, 18 years. And we doubled their ratings. Each and every book that came out four times a year. It's just, um, it's just very interesting, man. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's just very interesting, man. Y'all know I'm a, a brother of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And so we don't believe in excuses. The twos that are incompetent, build monuments and nothingness. So I never talk about this stuff, man. But you ask my opinion, I'll give it. I did an interview a couple months back, and uh, it was the same thing. The guy was like, why aren't you guys on radio? You know, this, that, and the other. I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, I'm not going to make excuses. I mean, I got a lot of... Thoughts on why we're not on radio? Too black, too strong. We didn't want to promote malt liquor. A lot of people thought we were defending Mike Vick. We were making too much money. To quote that line from Malcolm X, that's too much power for two ninjas to have. (laughs) I don't know, man. And then some people say it's just Hollywood. You know, all great things come to an end. Hell, Martin came to an end. Sanford and his son came to an end. Good times came to an end. So it may just be that. I don't know. Just very interesting. Back in three minutes to Doug Stewart Show. Finally break my way to fuck out This jail cell I call hell, they call reality 
I be wondering why the fuck they be mad at me.